Hi everyone, I'm Rinzi and this is Rinzi Reads. Today I'm going to be doing part two of my September wrap up. Last week I posted my part one because I've read a lot of books this month. I decided to break up my wrap up into two parts, which I normally don't do, uh, but I figured this would give me a chance to talk a little bit more about the books and not feel like super rushed to get everything in within like a 20 minute time frame. These videos are still long because I still have a lot of books to talk about. Uh, so let's jump right in. So the first book I want to talk about is Joyland by Stephen King. This is, I think it's technically a novella. Actually, I'm not sure about that. Don't take my word on that. For the Red or Dead podcast, which is the mystery thriller podcast that I co-host for Book Riot, we were doing a Stephen King specific episode and so I wanted to read a little bit more Stephen King. I haven't read a lot of Stephen King by any means. Joyland was recommended to me by a couple of different people and I knew that it wasn't like one of his like big horror novels which is not something I'm interested in. I am a big big baby uh, so I don't generally read like most horror books so I decided to go for Joyland because I had heard relatively good things about it. This is basically a coming of age story which was not what I was expecting. I was expecting like a mystery or suspense book. You are following this guy named Devin who is in college and over the summer he ends up getting basically a summer job at this carnival called Joyland. There are some like mysterious elements that are happening here. Uh, there's this woman who was murdered on one of the rides and so supposedly it's haunted. Uh, but the majority of the time you're basically just following Devin as he like figures out his life. You know they pitch the story as it like solving this mystery of this woman who was murdered a long time ago or at least years ago. And that is definitely part of the story but like I said it's mainly a coming of age story which was okay. <laughs> I thought this book was just like okay it wasn't bad it wasn't great it didn't really pull me in I didn't find the mystery particularly engaging it was fine it I, I can't really like recommend it I won't say that it's a bad book because I don't think it's really a bad book it's just kind of there the one thing I will say is that it seemed like the main character Devin was really obsessed with his girlfriend at the time so the way this book is structured it's Devin's telling you the story like a present day version of Devin is telling you the story of what happened to him over the course of this like year and assuming that this guy is probably you know in his like 50s or 60s when he's telling this story they don't really say that but you know he's older he's definitely like grown up he talks about how like people in his life have passed away because you know they've grown up so you know that he's significantly older he still seems really bitter about this girlfriend which was like my one main turn off about this book. I will say that. The next book that I finished was Chemistry by Wee K. Wang. In the story you are following this unnamed narrator. She is getting her PhD in chemistry. She is just under a lot of pressure in order to get the results that she needs in order to like complete her PhD. Um, she's dating someone who wants the relationship to move faster than she's really willing or wanting to. She's constantly comparing herself to her peers and the other people working at this lab. She has a lot of pressure. The main character is Chinese. I believe she's also a Chinese immigrant and so she feels a lot of pressure from her parents to succeed and to do great things and all this stuff and all of this pressure is really getting to her and then suddenly like basically she cracks one day and she's forced to figure out what she's going to do next after this major episode happens. This was a really interesting reading experience. This is a really short book and it's split basically into two parts and I was really into the first half of this book and I was not so much into the second half of this book unfortunately. I think that the author explores some really interesting things in terms of living your life sort of wanting to fulfill your parents expectations and not being able to do so and trying to figure out um, how to live your own life or how to live a life that's fulfilling to you and realizing that that might not like go towards what you're parents want in your life. There's also a lot of really interesting discussions in here in terms of like love and relationships and especially how um, different cultures sort of deal with that. The main character in here, like I said, she's a Chinese immigrant and so the way that she deals with people is very different than the way like her American boyfriend does. Her boyfriend is very like loving and expressive and shows his feelings and she's very much like an inward person. Um, she's not as expressive with her emotions. She's very like logical and things just very linear 
linearly. And there's even just like a little bit of just stiltedness in terms of her understanding just because she's also a Chinese immigrant. So there's like language barriers also happening. There's a lot of things about like various metaphors that don't make sense to her because obviously she didn't grow up with the language and such. But after this sort of like major episode happens, the story starts to like fall apart a little bit. It loses a lot of structure and then it feels like it rushes in the end to just kind of wrap everything up. And I feel like the way it wrapped up was like a little bit too neat and nice for the way things were going. Um, I think that if this were maybe a little bit of a longer book, it would have been nicer to kind of like spread out that ending a little bit more um, to make it feel more natural. The writing in here is very stilted and Again, I think that has a lot to do with like the narrator's point of view. English isn't her first language and she's a very, you know, not into like flowery language or metaphors or anything like that. There's a lot of references in here to like chemistry and scientific methods and things like that, which I actually really like. Like I like that sort of play on what's happening in her life and how she views it through the lens of a scientist. But yeah, I just kind of wished everything was developed a little bit more. By the end, again, it just felt like it was all being rushed to be finished and it didn't really like have an organic ending to it. Um, so yeah, I gave it a three out of five stars. It's not a bad book. It's a relatively short book. If it sounds interesting to you, I would check it out. But I know that this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. So yeah, liked it, didn't love it. All right, next up, I got Bluebird Bluebird by Attica Locke. This is probably one of my most anticipated books of the year. This is a brand new release. It just came out in September and I got it from the library immediately. I love this book. I'm actually going to do a full review on this book, so I'm not going to talk about it too much here. But if you have read Attica Locke before and you enjoy her books, then you should definitely pick this one up. It's not my favorite. Cutting Season is still my favorite out of her books, but this one is now a close second. In this story, you are following this character named Darren, who is a Texas Ranger. He left his hometown to like go to school and he was like on his way of being a lawyer and then stuff happened and he ends up becoming a Texas Ranger. When you start off, he's like in the middle of this big case and trial and you kind of see what sort of state his life is in. And then he gets pulled into this case in a small town which just like reminds him a lot of like his home and the things that he had to deal with. Yeah, Attica Locke is just like a really great writer. She intertwines the ideas of like a general mystery along with what it's like to be a black person in the United States right now. Even beyond that, like the characters in here are so, so complex. Darren is not a great person. <laughs> by any like measure. I mean, he does good things, but like he's also done some really bad things as well. Um, and so Attica Locke creates these sort of characters who very much live in the gray area of the world. And I think it's just like a really interesting exploration of that. So yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I gave this book a four out of five stars and I will be doing a full review on it next month. All right. And the next book that I finished this month was One Dark Throne by Kendair Blake. And this is the sequel to Three Dark Crowns. This book, I believe, is going to be a four book series. And I'm not going to talk too much about the synopsis because it's literally impossible to do this uh, without spoiling things about the first book. I really enjoyed the second book. If you read the first one and you really liked it, you're going to like this one as well. If you didn't like the first one, you're not going to like this one either. Uh, because it's literally like along the same lines as the first book. This is a very like slow paced character driven fantasy story which I think is my personal favorite type of fantasy stories. It reminds me a lot of the Queen of the Tearling series. Queen of the Tearling is a lot more like violent and a lot more in your face and yeah just like a lot more adult uh, but if you like that series and you also like young adult books I think that you will like this series as well. Kendra Blake just does a really great job of just creating this really interesting cast of characters. My one complaint would be that there are a lot of characters that you have to to follow in this series but I really love the three queens a whole lot and just seeing how things develop is crazy to me. I was so surprised like there are certain things where I was like okay it's very clear certain plot points are going to happen in the second book just based on the way things are unfolding and I was reading this going how is she going to accomplish this and still make this a four book series and then the events happened and I was like completely in awe of Kendra Blake so yeah I'm really enjoying the series. Um, feel free to talk to me about it down in the comments below if you've read these books as well because I would love to talk about it. Uh, just make sure you mark your comments 
like spoilers for the series and stuff so that way people don't get spoiled if they haven't read it already. But yeah, if you are someone who likes slow paced character driven fantasy series, I recommend checking these out for yourself. I'm also going to link to my favorite books of 2016 video uh, just because I talk about Three Dark Crowns in that one. I believe it's that video. I'll find the video I talk about it because yeah, it was one of my favorite books of 2016 and this is just continuing on and is still one of my favorites. I very rarely love a series this much anymore and this is still one that oh it, I'm so excited for the next two books. I'm very upset that they don't come out for like another year. Although there are prequels coming out. I think they're novellas. But yeah, I want the real books now. Or not, you know, they're all real books, but whatever, you know what I mean. <laughs> Next up, I finished A Kind of Freedom by Margaret Wilkerson Sexton. This is a book I picked up because it was long listed for the National Book Award. I don't know if I talked about it on this channel yet. I talked about it on Twitter, that's for sure. When the long list for the National Book Award was announced, I was really excited by the fiction long list as well as the young adult fiction young long list. So I decided to try to read as many of those books as possible because I've already read three out of the ten. Um, this will be four out of ten now. So I figured I might as well just read as much of the long list as I can. Uh, some of them aren't out yet so I can't read those although I guess I could try to get arcs but I don't care that much. Um, anyways, <laughs> this is a multi-generational novel that spans from the 1940s through about present day. I believe the last year is around like 2010 or 2011 and you are mainly following three characters within the this family. The first one is Evelyn who is this Creole woman living in New Orleans. She is growing up in sort of like the midst of World War II. I believe that the story for her starts around like 1942 I want to say. And then you follow her daughter Jackie who is living in about like the 1980s and then you're following Jackie's son named TJ who is again in sort of like present day. Yeah this is one that's very very short. It's less than 300 pages long. I will say the one like complaint I have is that I wish it was longer because I think there's still like so much with this family that could have been explored but I did give this book a four to five stars. It's really really moving, really really heartbreaking. You can definitely tell it has like debut novelness on it and another thing is that it doesn't follow the family like linearly. Like you start with Evelyn in the 1940s and the, but then you jump to Jackie and then you jump to TJ and then you jump back to Evelyn and you kind of like go through all of them in cycles. And I just realized the character's name is not TJ, it's TC, which is a really interesting way to tell the story. And sometimes it was nice because you at least know that like things are going to come. But there are certain like links that I wish were made. Uh, there are, you know, kind of big gaps in between all of these different decades. And so there are big parts of this family's history that you don't necessarily get. But I think that this novel does a really great job of sort of showing how the things that affect sort of like one generation sort of like trickles down through multiple generations. This is a black family so you definitely see a lot of like how society changes and how they're treated. There's a lot of like discussions in terms of like forgiveness and what family means and expectations and just all of these different things are explored in here. It's just if you're someone who likes multi-generational novels then I think that you will like this book. Again it's on the shorter side and I kind of wish it was a little bit longer so it could have been like slightly more developed with all these different characters but I think that all of these characters were really interesting. It's one of the rare in instances where I actually liked all of the different points of views a lot of times with either multi-generational novels or with just like multiple perspectives in general. There's usually at least one where I'm not really that thrilled by but I found all of these characters completely interesting and I wanted to see what was going to happen and I wanted to see sort of like how the dots were going to connect between these different generations um, and just even seeing how like obviously like people from different generations are obviously going to show up in these different character stories so sort of seeing how different characters like even side characters uh, progressed over time was really well done. So yeah I gave this book a four to five stars. Again if you like multi-generational family stories this is definitely one you should put on your list. All right and then the final book that I finished this month was The Child Finder by Renee Denfeld. I was really excited for this book because The Enchanted is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a couple of years you will know that because I talked about it a lot. It's one of the few five star ratings I gave. Um, this one I gave a three out of five stars. I found it to be again just fine. In the story you are mainly following this character named Naomi who is dubbed sort of like the child finder. She is someone who goes out and looks for uh, children who have gone missing for various families like she's hired independently like a private investigator. The main investigation that she is doing in this story is for this girl named Madison who disappeared in the woods one day. The parents are obviously very much believing that their daughter is still alive and she's hoping that the ch 
Naomi will be able to find her out in the woods. There's also like a secondary storyline in terms of an investigation, uh, but that one isn't given quite as much importance again because it's secondary. Yeah, this book was a little bit of a mess in my opinion. It's relatively short. This is another one. I read it as an ebook so I'm not completely sure but I think it's less than 300 pages. It just felt like it was a little bit all over the place. You see things from multiple points of view so you see Naomi's point of view as she's like searching for Madison and you also see things like about her own life and like how she became an investigator and her relationship with different people but you also see things from Madison's point of view and like the way that they broke up the chapters like sometimes there would be chapters where half of it was from Naomi's point of view and half of it was from Madison's point of view when I was reading that I was like why wouldn't you just break this up into separate chapters that would make more sense for me logically because there would just be sort of like the large paragraph breaks and I wouldn't realize that it was like switching perspectives because there was nothing that really indicated that until you started reading. It wasn't like the large paragraph breaks indicated switching perspectives because sometimes there would be large paragraph breaks and you'd still be in the same perspective. The story is also like too good or like too saccharine. I don't know how to explain it but it's like the way that they talk about love sometimes is like super cheesy in my opinion and even the way they describe things like abuse and missing kids and all of that just felt too simple. I don't know if that's just me being too critical because obviously I'm not someone who's been in those situations and Renee Denfeld works as an investigator and I believe has experience with even just like foster kids and stuff like that. But yeah, it just felt like too cheesy, I think. And it lo lacked like nuance and complexity and I don't know, it feels like this should have been a book that it was worked on a little bit more or just edited a little bit more. Like I said, there's a secondary storyline which, while interesting, I don't think really added much to the story. Naomi is a very damaged character uh, for understandable reasons and I feel like even the way that she deals with her own sort of baggage is very too easy, too simplistic. I can't highly recommend this book the way that I do The Enchanted. If you want to read Renee Denfeld, go read The Enchanted. This book, again, it wasn't bad but it just wasn't great either. It just was. <laughs> and I think that there are some like good ideas and concepts and stuff that's talked about in here, especially dealing with children who are fostered. I really like the fact that there are like good foster parents in this book, which is really hard to find in stories, let me tell you, because I look for them. I just was disappointed. So yeah, that's everything that I read in the month of September. If you've read any of these books, feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys thought of them. Or if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment about that as well. Or if you don't have any of that, feel free to let me know what your favorite read of September was. Mine was either Sing Unburied Sing, which I talked about in my last video, or it was Bluebird Bluebird, which is also fantastic. Or maybe Orhan's Inheritance. Oh man, I don't know. I read a lot of great books this month. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.